Creating G-Code with the Line Grinder software. Welcome to part two of this tutorial series on how to use the Line Grinder software. The previous video provided a walkthrough of the process of creating a double-sided isolation routed circuit board with drilling and edge cut. If you haven't already seen this video, you really should watch it now. The discussion of how and why Line Grinder does things will make a lot more sense to you if you have some knowledge of the isolation routed PCB creation process. This tutorial will show you the basic process of using and configuring the Line Grinder software to create G code files, which, when you run them, will create an isolation routed circuit board for you. Which brings us to an important point. The Line Grinder software is free and open source and is released under the MIT license. This essentially means you can do anything you wish with it, including making money. Go ahead, make some money. The only thing you cannot do with Line Grinder is to stop other people from also doing what they want with it. Please also be aware that the license explicitly states that Line Grinder has no guarantees or warranties. You run the code it creates entirely at your own risk. There may be bugs. You are responsible for checking that the code it produces is both suitable and safe for your machine. Line Grinder can be downloaded from the website address on the screen. Or you can download the source from GitHub and compile it yourself. It is written in C-sharp. There is no installer. The download consists of a zip file containing two files and some folders with help files and demo projects and things like that. Just copy the contents out of the zip file anywhere you wish. Once you have copied the files to a suitable place, just start the Line Grinder .exe file and you will see the main panel. The display is visually quite simple. The tabs on the left contain visual information about the current state of Line Grinder. The buttons on the right provide major functionality such as opening files and saving. There is a bit of configuration to do before you use Line Grinder for the first time. However, let's assume for now that the configuration has been done and we will see how to use Line Grinder. We'll circle back to the configuration options later on. First of all, you need the Gerber and Exelon files output by your EDA software. All electronic design software can save in this format. For example, in KiCad, look under the File Fabrication Output submenu for the tools to do this. For a double-sided board with edge cuts and hole drilling, you will need top and bottom Gerber files and an edge cuts Gerber file. A separate option will give you the Exelon drill files for the holes in the PCB. A separate video in this series will provide hints and tips on how to optimize your PCB layout for isolation routing and that video will also demonstrate the details of the Gerber file creation process in KiCad. When it becomes available it will be linked in the comments below. Once we have our Gerber files let's open the one which defines the top traces of the circuit board. To do this we click on the open Gerber drill file menu at the top right. A standard Windows open file dialog box appears and we can choose any file we wish. We are interested in the files which end in .gbr. The top layer is the one named line grinder demo video board underscore keycat f.cu.gbr. We see it here. In particular note that the file name in this case is structured as a project name with a suffix. Here the project name is line grinder demo video board underscore keycat and a suffix of dash f underscore cu dot gbr is appended. It is this suffix that tells you what layer the board represents. The f here means front. There is a similar file for the bottom layer with a b which means back. And another one with the edge cuts information. Observe also that there is a line grinder video board underscore keycad dot drl file with Exelon drilling information. Note that these are just the keycad suffixes. All EDA software uses this sort of project name suffix name file name pattern to identify the layers. Unfortunately, they all use different standards. The suffix is important though, as line grinder will also use this suffix name to determine which configuration information to apply and how to process the file. So when we get to configuring Line Grinder, be aware that every configuration you set up applies to only to one specific suffix. The software will check the file name and use the first matching configuration it finds. Having said all that, let's open the top layer file. The Plot View tab provides you with a view of the file that you have currently opened. 
At this time, you are just looking at a Gerber plot similar to that which you might see in your EDA software. Also note that a new tab named Gerber file has appeared. This tab contains the complete Gerber code. You can expect it if you wish. There's nothing for you to do here. There are no actions to take on this tab. It is for information only. Let's return to the Plot View tab. No processing has happened yet. We can make this happen by pressing on the Convert to G-Code button. The conversion happens without any further interaction on our part. This can take a bit of time for larger board sizes, and you will see a message box pop up telling you that the processing is finished. Once the conversion has happened, we see the isolation routed tracks displayed in white on the Plot View tab. These lines are the path the engraving bit will make as it defines the traces on the PCB. The width of these lines is the width of the channel the bit will make in the copper layer of the PCB. You can do the usual things like use the mouse scroll wheel to enlarge the plot, and scroll side to side and top to bottom using the scroll bars. Let's put the screen to 200%. Note that a new tab called Isolation G-Code has appeared. This tab contains the complete G-Code you will run. You can inspect it if you wish. As with the Gerber tab, there are no actions to take on this tab. It is for information only. So let's return to the Plot View tab. On the left hand side you will see a number of options. You can show the 00, zero origin of the plot. This is the origin that your EDA software used in the Gerber file. In this case you can see it has appeared in the bottom left hand corner. You can also show the 00, zero origin of the G-code plot that Line Grinder has generated by clicking on the Show G-code Origin button. For line grinder, the G-code origin is always in the center of the plot. You can also show the center flip axis. This is mostly useful for bottom isolation routing configurations. All of these things are just for your information. The G-code output has already been generated and changing these options does not affect that in any way. Another interesting option is to show the Gerber plot on top of the ISO routed tracks. Just click on the Show Gerber Plot option at the bottom left. You can see the isolation routing lines run nicely around the edges of all the PCB pads and traces. The, the options on the top of the left hand side allow you to determine what the plot view shows. You can ignore the ISO plot step 1, step 2, and step 3 options. These are only useful for developers working on the isolation routing algorithms. By all means, play about with these options if you wish. They just show you the various stages of the conversion process and you cannot hurt anything by messing about with them. If you're interested in that sort of thing, you might also want to experiment with the show center lines and show apertures options on the Gerber plots. As with the previous options, these are mostly for diagnostic purposes and are purely informational. You will also note that there are some plot views which are grayed out, such as edge mill G-code, bed flattening G-code, and others. The edge mill G-code option is not available because we are not processing a board with edge cut information. That is a different Gerber file. The ref pins G code is not available because this particular configuration, top copper, is currently not set to generate the reference pin G code. It could be, but typically we generate reference pin information off the bottom copper layer, so that when we process that file, then this option will enable. Well, that's a lot of talking, but actually all we've done is loaded a single Gerber file. This got automatically matched with a predefined configuration, and then we pressed the convert to G code button. We need to save the G code. We can just press the Save ISO G-Code button, which has become enabled once we generated the G-Code. A dialog box helpfully pops up telling us what it's done. 
The Save button will save the G-code displayed on the G-code tab as a file with an NGC extension. You can also save it under any name you wish using the Save As option. Really, it is a very simple process. All you really do is apply a configuration to a file and save. Now we will process the bottom copper layer in a similar way. Before we do that, let us note that we are currently looking at the top layer. For future reference, pay particular attention to the fact that there are four pads on the left-hand side and two pads on the right-hand side. Since the CNC machine can only cut from the top down, you will need to flip the board over in order to cut the bottom side. This means that Line Grinder also needs to flip things in order to properly generate the G-code to cut the bottom copper side. If it does not do this, things will not be properly aligned between the top and bottom layers. If done correctly, we would expect to see these four pads over here on the right-hand side of the board when we display the bottom layer. We open the bottom copper Gerber file. During the file open, Line Grinder triggered on the dash B underscore CUGBR extension and automatically loaded the matching configuration. You will note the previous tabs have closed and we are back to a simple Gerber plot tab. Everything on the display is always derived from the current Gerber plot and whatever processing has happened to it. It is not possible to open multiple Gerber files at the same time. Note that the plot has been automatically flipped. We now have four pads on the right and two pads on the left. The enabled show flip axis option tells us the center around which the board was flipped. As before, we press the convert to G-code button. Note that like with the top copper layer, we have an isolation G-code tab but now we also have a ref pin G code tab. This tab has now appeared because the configuration associated with bottom isolation routing is set to create G code for the reference pins. You could, if you wished, set the reference pin G code to create on the top layer or both. It is quite configurable and totally under your control. We can inspect the reference pin G code and the bottom copper G code if we wish. and return to the plot view. Now we need to save both files. Note that there are now two save buttons enabled. One for the isolation G-code and one for the reference pin G-code. Pressing the save isocode button saves the isolation G-code and pressing the save R pin G-code saves the reference pin G-code. That's the isolation routing G-code taken care of. We also need to create the G-code for the edge cuts to cut our circuit board out of the PCB and optionally we also might need bed flattening G-code. We just perform a similar sequence of actions. We open the file Line Grinder Demo Video Board KeyCAD EdgeCuts.GBR. The suffix dash edge underscore cuts.gbr on this file name will trigger the predefined configuration options to apply. The plot display does not show all that much, just the board outline. Note that the outline does not need to be rectangular. We press the Convert to G-Code button. As before, the cut is drawn in white. Observe that the width of the cut is much larger due to the fact that this configuration is set to use a milling bit to cut through the board. We can enable the Show Gerber Plot option to see the board itself The edge cuts have tabs to prevent the board from flying off once it is cut out. The number and size of these tabs is configurable. Note that we also now have two tabs on the plot view. We have edge mill G-code tab and we have a bed flattening G-code tab. We can just save these G-code files by pressing on the save edge mill G-code and the save bed F G-code buttons over on the right hand side. Things are getting pretty routine now. As you might imagine, the drill file is handled in much the same way.
In this case, the file is called line grinder demo video board underscore keycat.drl. We open it as before. The preset configuration options trigger on the .drl extension and LineGrinder knows the appropriate settings to use. We convert it to G-code. Note that if we are overlaying the Gerber Exelon plot on top of the G-code, we cannot see anything. This is because the size of the objects on the Exelon plot is exactly the same size as the object on the G-code plot. They are drill holes after all. We can easily fix this by turning off the Gerber Exelon overlay. There is a slight complication here. Note the sequence of four holes on the left hand side. This means the generated drill file G-code has not been flipped. Remember how we flipped the bottom copper layer? This is not a problem. It just means that we have to run this drill G-code when the top layer is facing upwards. If we wish to drill when the bottom layer is upwards, then we could just use one of the configuration options to flip that G-code appropriately. This brings us to the end of the section on how to use the line grinder software to create G-code. It is pretty simple really. Of course, all the previous actions were based on having pre-configured settings that activated when a file of a specific suffix was opened. In the next video, let's take a look at how those settings work.